All right, I traced um, everything, including all of these lines. I am not a boat person, so I don't know what any of this stuff is, but I figure uh, if it's there, it's important. Okay, so we don't want to be <laughs> taking pieces out. We are going to put all of this mess in there. However, you're not going to have to paint it, okay? Because painting those really fine lines is a nightmare. You're going to draw these lines in later. And some of them could even be done with a ruler. Okay, so you will use uh, either a pencil for some of these super fine lines. We'll probably go with like a gray or black pen. I also have paint markers that will look sort of like watercolor and I have them in gray and in black and it has like a brush tip and so it can look like watercolor even though it's not. All those details, we will draw them in later. But I put them in here to give me more reference and just help me with the composition and figure out where I want things to be. So tracing them can be useful. Uh, we will probably not see a lot of this once we start painting because we're gonna make this really awesome stormy sky and those darker colors could overtake the pencil lines. All right, so let's take this off and see how we did. You're gonna check and make sure you're not missing anything critical. I didn't forget any spots. Actually, you should have checked that before you rip it off because now if I try to put it back on, it'll be terrible trying to get it to line up. So check that before you take the tape off. And I think mine looks good. Now, I want to just be able to see the lines barely so that they don't show through on my painting later. So this is where I'm gonna take my eraser, and a kneaded eraser is ideal because it won't leave any little debris pieces of the eraser behind it and won't make any marks. So I'm just cleaning this up a bit so that I can still see the faint lines, but nobody else will be able to see it later. You only need two brushes for this a small round and a medium to large round. That would probably be enough. All right, oh, and of course, don't forget your paper towel pieces. And then if you have tape, this is just painter's tape. I got it at Walmart. Uh, I hear, um, was it Wasi tape? I never use that stuff, hope I'm saying that right. That works well for this too. I'm going to do a half inch border. So because the painting's small and the tape is really wide, I am going to tape off my border here. And doing this will just give you a much cleaner, more finished look to your end piece without having to mat or frame it. So I usually like to do this. It's another step, takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. One more thing I like to do. I am going to attach my painting to a board that I can move. Highly recommend this. You could just use a piece of sturdy cardboard. And then I'm gonna tape down all the sides again. I guess I could have just done this directly on the board, but I didn't think about it in time. What this is going to allow me to do is pick up the board and bend and turn it so that I can control where the water flows. And then it's also going to keep it perfectly flat so that 
when the water hits the paper and the paper sucks it up and starts to buckle and ripple, it's going to minimize that. It would also uh, help. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. So I will move the water over here now because of that. All right, you need your color reference ready to go again. The ones I made you guys, I think I printed larger. This is pretty small. So you guys have the advantage. You'll be able to see things a little more clear. I want you to have some freedom with the colors that you choose, but we wanna go for a um, foggy, stormy feel. So wet on wet, we've practiced that a lot already. We are basically going to wet the paper everywhere except for maybe this corner. Okay, so we'll leave that, that corner kind of bright and open. And then we're gonna drop in these different colors. So you need to have all these colors mixed up, ready to go. And then do you see the gorgeous blooms, they're called, that's happening right here, okay? That's the beauty of watercolor, of how it can do that. And you can't get the look and that feel from anything else, since we're going for any other type of medium. Since we're going for a stormy look, that lends itself perfectly to watercolor. So you need to get these musty, dusty, dark colors ready to go. And then once we paint it with water, we're gonna drop in different colors and just have fun with it and let it bleed and blend and do its own thing. All right, so our base skies are gonna look different, uh, but each one should look pretty cool. Okay, sorry, my phone died and I had to um, take care of that problem, but I had to finish dealing with my painting first because once you start this, you can't stop. And so here's my final sky, and I'm, it's still dry, so it's gonna continue to change its look a little bit. At first, I was like, I was not happy with the direction it was going, and I kept fidgeting, and then I thought I was fidgeting and messing too much, and I was like, I am not liking this at all. Now that I've taken my hands off and I'm letting it dry, it is doing some cool stuff, and overall, I'm, it's growing on me. I'm starting to like it. All right, so you might feel the same way. That is okay. It might not go as planned. Remember, this paper does not act as nice as the 100% cotton paper, and so some of the techniques that we're trying to shoot for and hope work out, it's not as easy. It's not going to behave quite as nice, so just always keep that in mind. Uh, the quality of your watercolor supplies matter dramatically with the outcome. We want it to look like water. We want it to look distinctly different than the sky, but reflect all the same colors. So we need to get these streaky colors in, okay? Leaving some of the white space. Um, so we might do this in two layers. Yeah, so we're gonna do a lighter streaky layer first, let it dry completely. Then we'll go over it again and add these little bit darker pieces. I'm gonna go right up to the boat and I'm basically toning the paper and setting the feel. This is just the first layer. I'm leaving some white space, not a lot. So I don't want to have the harsh, harsh white paper really showing through. I'm just going to give it an overall look and feel of having that little bit of warm 
colors show through. You definitely want to use a round brush for this so you get those thick stripes with the pointy kind of edges on the sides. Get lighter um, towards the bottom here because, well, in my paintings, see I have these lighter areas here, so that means I want this area to stay lighter as well. I'll preserve those whites, don't get rid of them. Now this is darker over on this side, so I'm going to tone it down a bit more and have less white paper showing. Alright, so we're going to stop. Now we need to let that dry completely. So, Okay, I'm going to start over here on the left since I've got this dusty blue color ready to go. Because I have this dark color right on the horizon. I need to stick with that with my reflections as well. So I have to make sure it kind of matches. So I'm not going to keep it as streaky there yet. I'll do it a little bit here. Okay, now here's where I'll start adding the streaks. So basically what I mean is I'm going to be leaving some of the white paper showing through. All right, I'm gonna probably stop talking while I do this <laughs> so I can focus. Make sure this goes the way I want. And don't overthink it. that dry again and then I might go after we see what happens when it dries I might go in again and make some areas of the water a little bit darker if I do it now it's gonna create because it's wet and if I go in and I add more colors um, the extra wet paint is going to butt up against the somewhat dry paint but not completely dry and create all of those blooms which is beautiful for the sky not so much for the water. Okay, we want to keep that clean, streaky look. So, I'm gonna let it dry again. All right, final stage of the water. I feel like it's a little bland and a little blue and gray. Um, since we've got this pink up here and hints of it showing here, we need to get that to reflect on the water. So, I need to carefully mix up and make sure that I've got a comparable color. And it's a little fresher than that, a little pinker. Where this is, is above, it's a good bit above where this part of the reflection is. So we're going to go down here to where that matches and lines up and then go above it. And I need to add some of that pink in here. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. It just needs to have the overall feel that it's there. Okay. There's also some of that purplish undertone over here. So let's get a little bit more color in there. Alright, I feel like I need to brighten this just a bit. Like it needs to draw a little attention down there. Just a bit. Okay, so let's look around and see what else. This is much deeper blue than I have here, so I need to get 
some deeper blue shadows in. Not shadows, sorry, reflections. And just, again, it's not right here. It's gonna be roughly this area. Okay, I don't think that's dark enough. So you make something darker by mixing up a thicker color of the same thing. And I can't talk, <laughs> this is stressing me out. I can't, I can't talk while I do this. <laughs> Pressure's on for this to turn out looking decent. Okay, pressure should not be on you guys, okay? This is just me as the experienced watercolor artist. <laughs> it's a little scary. Might have to call that done. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what happens once it dries. Probably force myself not to touch any more of the water. And then part two, I'll record another day, and we will do the boat. All right, that is it for now.